the, to do this and to consider it to be real understanding. Now that's just stupidity. I'm going to say this again. So knowledge, knowledge is limited, but knowing is not. Try to understand the unlimited through the limit is craziness. But to do this and to consider it to be real understanding, no, that's just stupidity. Those are our choices, crazy or stupid. <laughs> well, basically, it's a blind because if you're if there's that which is assumed to be us by the mental state, obviously is quite limited, yeah? So the mental state is quite limited and it's using itself to try to know the unlimited. There you go. Yeah. Instead of entertaining the idea that this talk today can be heard by the unlimited and it's going to have it's going to have knowledge about the limited that goes somewhere yeah that knowledge about the limited is you're not that <laughs> that's pretty good you see so the knowing which can't be known obviously that which is studying can't be studied that which is knowing can't be known that which is seeing can't be seen that which is hearing can't be heard yeah, that I would imagine could be construed as unlimited. Yeah. That which is taken to be the hearer, the seer, the feeler, the knower is quite limited. So a lot of us are knowing it or not, the limited is using the unlimited to try to know the unlimited as the limited. Yeah. You see? Yeah, this is just the warning, that's all. It's just the warning to, and to repeat the warning over and over again so it's, until it gets a foothold, yeah? And then it'll start encroaching all over the limited and you'll see through the limited, not, not see as the limited, you'll see through the limited from unlimited, yeah? It's not even unlimited. We use these terms to sort of produce a difference so that there can be a recognition, yeah? So fundamentally, what's usually happening is exactly what this was saying, yeah? He, he basically states the fact at the beginning, he goes, knowledge is limited, yeah? But knowing is not, okay? So there's the message. Knowledge is, knowledge is limited, but knowing is not. Yeah? To try to understand the unlimited through the limit is craziness. There's the shoe he's putting out at the Chang Su uh, shoe store. Yeah? It's a reused shoe. It's been worn many times. He's resold it. He glued it. He throws it back out there. So basically... We're meant to put it on just to see how it fits. Yeah. So if that's a if that's an apt description that I've been using, I've been trying to understand the unlimited through the limit. Yeah. That hopefully would produce a pause. Yeah. And what would become noticeable in the pause would be the unlimited. Yeah. It wouldn't be noticeable to the limited. It would just become noticeable. Yeah, there would be a sense of it. Yeah, not adorned in limitation and and squares and boxes. Yeah, and time like disguised in a time, but there would be a sense of it. Yeah, so the shoe isn't really about walking. The shoe is about stopping an activity. Yeah. You put on the shoe, it's not meant to get up and start running with the shoe. It actually stops an activity. Like there, there was used to be a commercial in America. I thought it was a satire when I first saw it. It was a lady sitting down like in a chaise lounge. 
and her leg was still was moving. And they said, oh, this lady, or at night, this lady is suffering from restless leg syndrome. I thought, what the hell? So she'd just be sitting there, and suddenly her leg would be moving. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. And they had given it a name, restless leg syndrome. So I said, but I looked into it, and it's, it seems to be a, an, a, a condition people have. So basically, we're in a restless leg syndrome. So when you come to this shoe store, you put on the spiritual stew, it stops, it stops the restlessness, yeah? It puts a pause on it. So that which is looking won't be running as the looker, yeah? You'll see, you'll get a sense, yeah? So the shoe basically stops your walking, stops the restless leg syndrome, and maybe You'll, it'll fit that, hey, I've been doing just that. I'm using, I'm trying to gain limited knowledge all the while using that which is knowing to gain knowledge of itself. Yeah? Doesn't that sound insane? Yeah, it's like that thing we talk about a lot. I'm at that bookstore and uh, I look on the, where they have these tons of books. I look at one of the books and it's, and it's consciousness and it's a 900 page book about consciousness yet we are conscious yeah consciousness why why would you want to read a book about what you are <laughs> i would rather just be what i am yeah I, why would i want to step out of what i'm what i am and become the one who wants to know what i am why would that it would isn't that going to be f fucking very very uh Frustrating? I would think so. So this, these statements, he goes, all right, knowledge is limited, but knowing is not. To try to understand the unlimited through the limit is craziness. But to do this and to consider it to be real understanding, now that's just stupidity. Yeah, so it doesn't need to have 800 comments. Yeah, it's just a, it's a statement to see if it fits. So if it fits, okay. So what do we, how, do, how would we follow up with this? Now, again, then suddenly the head, as being the doer, will now get guilty for doing this. Yeah, so we've got to go, no, you're not that, which is feeling guilty about doing this, because you're not doing that. Yeah, you're the unlimited. You're not the limited using unlimited to look for unlimited. Yeah, so you're off the hook. So the next thing is when you read this and go, wow, that describes exactly what I've been doing. The next answer is, and you're not that, you see? You're not that. You're not the, you're not the knower. You're not the limited knowing. Yeah, the, not, the wanting to have knowledge. That's the beauty. We're afraid to get to that point because we think it's going to be more, it's going to be, it's going to be the worst guilt of all, which is spiritual guilt. Oh, motherfucker, I've been screwed up so badly. Yeah? No. It's about, okay, the shoe fits. That's exactly what I've been doing. And then you say, and I'm not that I that was claiming to be doing it. Yeah? That's the beauty of the message. If we're in... A denial of this, this first statement, that we've been trying to understand the unlimited from a limited point of view. If we're in denial of that, hopefully this causes a ceasing of that denial. It finally lands. Oh, that's exactly what I've been doing. And I've never wanted to feel that, so I've just been in denial of it. So now it lands, and then you follow it up, and I'm not that, you see? The selfing, see, the weird thing with this is, let's say there's no recognition of what's going on. There's no, we're, we're, we're walking through everything without knowing what's happening, really. Yes? And then suddenly the aperture opens up a little more and you see something that you didn't used to see. And you see, wow, so this is why I act out. Yeah, this is why when I don't get what I want in a relationship, I go ballistic. This is why. And it starts providing answers to a lot of behavior, yeah? So 
There you go. Now you, and then you can call it self. You could call it ego. You could call it a demonic presence. You could call it a parasitical movement. But what so suddenly recognizing that one aspect of self draws out the other aspect of self, which is better. It's, it's more, there's a lot of value in seeing the, yin, the, yin, the yin appearance of self. Yeah. And you won't see the second appearance of self until in a way you see the first appearance of self or selfing. So now you've seen it, the first appearance, and that which claims to be the seeing of it is the second appearance. That's the real key, yeah? When you see, when, and the second one usually won't be noticed unless there's a first noticing the first one because it's response. So here's the first one that's been disguised as subjectivity, right? The subject, Paul, doing all this stuff. And then finally, I see it as something other than Paul. So now that self gets objectified. I can see it. But now the movement of claiming has claimed the seeing of that. That's the second one. So first there's the thief and there's the policeman. Then you realize the policeman is the same as the thief. Yes? But... The policeman wouldn't been, would, have, would not have been called up until you see the thief first. So you see the thief, and then the policeman shows up, and that's the one you really want to check out, yeah? And now I'm not that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now you've seen the duality of it, yeah? Once that, that little masquerading subjectness gets seen as an object, yeah, then... It shows itself once again. You can recognize it. You can see the second from the first. And there you go. You've broken a bond. You've broken the link, the dualistic link. Yeah? So here, someone hears the talks. They think they have an understanding. Oh, now I can recognize selfing. Yeah? And then they call me and they go, you know, I've been selfing all day. So once again, yeah, the self has been seen as an activity, but now the seeing of it has been claimed. So now they're talking as if they were the one that was doing the selfing. That's the one you want to catch, is the second one, yeah? See the second one. And see, the, I, find, I find here, by sharing for all these years, it almost seems necessary first to see the, fir the first, to see the first one, and then the second one is, comes out of the weeds, yeah? It lifts, into, it lifts to the surface and you can recognize it. So it's like, this is sort of catching, is explaining the first one. Hey, knowledge is limited, but knowing is not. To try to understand the unlimited through the limit is craziness. All right, you caught it, right? You caught that movement as crazy. Now, the feeling, there's been a catching of it or a seeing of it, and you, you haven't seen that there's been a claiming of being the seeing of it. So now that second self disguises itself once again as you. Now you've seen it. Yeah? Now you've seen it. You've caught the thief and the policeman. That's, that's the, ro the robbery isn't just the thief. It's the, it's the apprehension of the thief. By the policeman, that's the robbery. Yeah. That's the robbery. Now you've seen something, and something, the chips will fall in a different way, I'm telling you. Yeah. So spiritual guilt comes up. I don't want to admit that I've blown it for 30 years. That seems insane, yeah? So I've been practicing 25 years, and then I run into Cheng Su or somebody, Huang Po or one of those motherfuckers, and then they blow up my whole story. And so I don't want to read that. You know, I want to, oh, I want to forget you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha, like, immediately. Because what happens? If I cop to that, there's so much guilt. You know what I mean? This is like what they talk about in The Course in Miracles. We, we react to separation 
and we believe we're at fault, like we did it, yeah? So it doesn't make sense to really learn about duality and separation as not being so because we feel like we've done it somehow. So let's be stupid and not get anywhere near it so I won't have to feel the incredible guilt that I separated from God and I did all this insane shit, which you didn't. It's all imagined, yeah? So in this way, all right, I'm going to freaking finally admit it. That's exactly what's been happening. I've been using the Buddha to seek the Buddha, yeah? Yeah, and then that which is now claiming to be the one that was using the Buddha to seek the Buddha is seen as not you. You see it as not you, yeah? Yeah? It's beautiful, but it doesn't come up unless the first one is noticed in a way. So the aperture opens a little bit, you recognize stuff you weren't recognizing, and then you can almost watch the second one arise to become the subject once again and claiming the objectification of like self, which in some respects is called ego. So now there's a you that you're not that thinks it has an ego that it's not, yeah? Yeah. Which is the, where is the real bonding? Is it the ego? No. The ego has been objectified. So you'll say, I have an ego and I've lost an ego. What's that that had and lost the ego? That's the second appearance of it. We haven't seen. So now it takes the place of the first one and now it it claims the aperture. So now it's becoming clearer. Yes? And it, deci- and it thinks that if I know more about what, you know, the self, I'm going to have a better understanding. But you don't see the fine print as a self. You're going to have a better understanding as a self, yes? That's what thwarts you. It doesn't go anywhere. It's still bondage of self. So this isn't just the recognition All right, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of relief seeing the first aspect of the selfing, but the second one is where the avalanches are, yeah? The second one is when there's a real sense feltness. I mean, you've seen duality. You've seen what was subject turn into object by a new subject. You've seen it, yes? You've seen it. Now you have a real working understanding of dualism, which is the basis of all dual duality. Yeah, you've seen it. The subject, the subject is recognized by the true subjectivity. It's now turns into an object, and then another object, a, a mental object, takes the role of being the subject. You've caught it. Yeah, it just does the same thing over and over again. The one of the one dance step will not. The one dance step won't have a sudden understanding arise about duality. It won't trigger it. But seeing the subject-objectness, to seeing the subject for years suddenly seen as an object by a new subject, you've caught it, yes? That's what we're hoping to trigger here. Yeah, that's why we're trying to give warnings about what happens, because if it... If it's only another you that hears this, it doesn't want to hear it. It doesn't. Yeah? It's like this statement that Ramana shared about the greatest mystery is reality wanting to attain reality. Yeah? Now, how could that, how could reality ever be moved to start looking for itself? Obviously, there must be an activity reality is doing, which is taking something that it's not to be what it is, yeah? All right, so, okay, now that is starting to move towards reality. It becomes obvious that it's the block, yeah? That Paul, a.k.a. reality, that's moving towards reality is the block. It becomes obvious sooner or later that you are the obstruction, okay? So what? What happens? That mental logic comes to a conclusion. Well, the only way I'm going to attain reality is that that Paul be completely destroyed. Do you think the mental state identified as that Paul is going to rush towards the goal of reality? 
it's going to drag its feet for fucking ever. Because in its logic is, if I find reality, I'm kaput. <laughs> its whole drive is not to admit that it is reality. Its whole drive is not to admit it. And one of the ways it doesn't admit it is by looking for it. Yeah? It looks for it all. It will look for it lifetimes. Because it's guaranteed never to find it because it is it. Yeah? So the mental logic... If you are the obstruction and you're identified as that, it, it looks like you have to be destroyed. And basically, you're truly not that into that. Yeah, <laughs> just not. So it just it's like a cognitive dissonance that doesn't go anywhere. It's like this. Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. If you catch the second one, it put that whole thing collapses. Yeah, the whole thing collapses. Yeah, you are not that that has been looking for reality. Thank fucking God, yeah. That's the good news. That's the good news about the message, really. It doesn't come from the recognition of selfing from another form of self. It doesn't come from that. It comes from recognizing selfing and then recognizing the second appearance of self as selfing. Yeah. That's when a free rangeness occurs. That's when you're not going through a, a, like a gated little fucking uh, walkway. It opens up, yeah? It opens up. You've now seen the mental state's whole thing. Sometimes you're thought about as an object. Sometimes you're thought about as the subject, yes? It's, that's it. You've seen both now. You've seen it, yeah? And the warnings are about, guess what? It's a mechanical claiming. It's not personal. It doesn't do it because it doesn't like you or it's Saturday. It's mechanical. The mental state will claim whatever it's brought into contact with. That's what it does, yeah? So the seeing brings it into contact. So when there's a seeing of what you're not, what you're not is going to claim to be the seer of what you're not, yes? So now you've recognized it. You caught it. Yeah. So bang, the first one pops up. The second one that claims to be the seeing of it pops up, and they're both seen not to be so. Yes. Yeah. All right, that's it. Yeah. Reminds me of recovery. See the similarities, not the differences. Uh, Glenda had her hand up, but that's disappeared. And Jack's got his hand up now. Hi, Paul. Hey. Hey. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so weird. Um, that's exactly what I noticed today, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and it's so, I don't know, it's just weird that... Uh, <clears throat> That's the topic. Well, not weird, but whatever. It's not weird at all. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> it's all of our topic. It's not mine or yours. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly what I noticed today. As I was out on my walk. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the first was uh, being a little unruly. And then the uh, the second one popped up, and uh, um, I, I I remember it actually saying uh, we're gonna have to put you in the back seat now. You gotta you gotta chill out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's exactly what you said, man. And it's awesome. Um, there isn't a first or second. We're just doing that in time. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. part of us is still trying to see timelessness through time. So we're using first and second, but right. it's not rooted in that, but in appearance. So we need that when sometimes hearing this message with language, you need to wear like corrective bifocals. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you'll see one first, then the other, so you can recognize neither. Yeah, yeah, but right. <laughs> awesome. There is no first or second. There's right. just a claiming, uh, and there's an incessant claiming that usually, for most of us, never gets past the first one. Yeah. So the second one is running around like cra crazy, never gets this disturbed in its natural or let's say artificial habitat now it's heard some footsteps yeah <laughs> you've recognized the uh the the exotic you know mountain lynx or something yeah so now you've flushed it out <laughs> yeah, see because see people sometimes they see the first one and they're expecting it to translate to great relief and it doesn't and it's very fucking confusing. Yeah? yeah. Because in, nothing, in, in, in the illusory event, it's two-ness. It's not this made up inherent one independent separate thing. There's no independent separate thing. There's no unit. Yeah? It's two-ness. Non-duality is negating two-ness. If there was a long-lasting, independent, separate thing, yeah, there, there would be no idea of non-duality, yeah? That would be the reality. But the reality is it's, a, it's, a, it's an activity that's dualistic, yeah? So subject, object, this and that, it's all how it's disguised by the mental state. It's pinned on a seeming independent, loss, long-lasting, separate thing, yeah? And so basically, the thing recognizes something else as what's bothering it, doesn't recognize that the thing itself is the source of the bothering, yeah? By looking from the one, you don't see two. You don't see the two-ness. By looking from what's looking, you see two-ness. Yeah. You see two-ness in the appearance of one. Yeah? When you see it from what's seeing, you see two-ness, the duality, masquerading in the appearance of one. Yeah? What this statement is saying is what the masquerading as one is trying to understand two-ness. It's pointless. Pointless. You see what you're not, yeah? And in that, you'll find out, yeah, what you are. And you'll definitely find out what you're not, yeah? So... Mm. All right, all's fine. Awesome, thank you, Paul. There's someone, uh, oh, I thought it was my friend Jeff from Pennsylvania. It isn't. Carries up. Kerry? Hey, what's happening, Paul? Here we are. I uh, had way too much time to think. Now, uh, but when you were talking, I mean, they could go on ad infinitum when you, I know it's in time, but these people keep coming up and that's not it, that's not it, you know, keeps going, going. And you get to the point where I start laughing and then it's just like, well, what am I, what do I, what am I supposed to do? Nothing, what stay with the yeah. laugh. I know, it's cool, but you still got to like get up in the morning, brush your teeth. Uh, yeah, you're going to do have that. breakfast. Yeah, you have coffee, yeah. hang out. But it's just, but my thing is, it's just not taking life so serious, man. Like myself, first I got, I don't take myself serious, but then I look at people 
and I'm laughing, but they're like, why are you laughing? And I'm like, I'm not laughing at you. I'm just laughing. And then it's, so you have to be kind of careful just because, you know, I don't know. Um, the one question I had, and I'm not super religious at all, but I, I will say this, I was raised Catholic. <laughs> uh, and that one say, you know, seek and you shall find. And I mean, what am I seeking? You know, what's, what I'm looking for is what's looking, but what do you think like they meant when seek and you shall find? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't for. think it's applicable anymore. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I don't think it's applicable anymore. <laughs> you may seek and you may find anything that's not you for sure. Seek and you will find anything that's not you. But you can't apply that to what you are. <laughs> Fair enough. You, you can seek what you are from what you're not. Yeah, it doesn't work. Maybe it was actually, maybe they didn't see it. Maybe that was sort of a, a list of shit he wanted to buy at the store. <laughs> and then after hundreds of years, it got turned into some fucking seek and you shall find. They were looking for like, you know, corn flour and shit. <laughs> Make some flatbread. And now they turn to the scripture. I should have wore the Jesus shirt I have, which is, I never said that. The great shirt, the big picture, supposed West Coast Jesus, and it says, I never said that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. All right. Has that been your experience when it comes to what you are, that seeking is the appropriate manner to find where you, what you already are? How can you find no. what you already are? Yeah, no, it's just so ingrained. It was so ingrained in me, you know, from a little kid on up and even in recovery sometimes. Yeah, that's I mean, the story. It so, now it's done, bro. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Don't, I, you, know, you don't have to resuscitate it. Yeah, just true. breathe away. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Thank you. Of course, the Miracles has that as one of the lessons that it's not about seeking in time. Like, you know, of course you cover it. It's about realizing that you stop seeking worldly and you seek now for now. Mm. Well, then you're not going to seek for long. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, the, that's the idea right but that's not not that of course of miracles helps with that for uh, a lot of people right it really gets <laughs> it really gets uh pretty bad with the course of miracles from the trying to understand that but it does try to try to redeem what carrie brought up Nor, our friend Norm. Nor. Nor, is your mic is your microphone working? Okay, is the mic working? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I've had trouble with it. Uh, I'm on a cell phone with a uh, whatever. Don't worry about my electronic stuff. I'm it's it's, it's very staticky, so speak uh, slowly. Okay, I will. <laughs> um. I probably have two questions, but I'm going to do the simple one first. The question I probably asked you a billion times in various lifetimes, Paul. So my, my sense of uh, practice, meditation, is what it's for is to remind us of a peaceful state or the deep state. It's not exactly the same thing itself because it's, there's an, a sense of practicing into it. And that practice, I'm not just talking about meditation. I'm talking about 12-step work. I'm talking about whatever people do. Do you have a comment on that, that that's kind of why we keep practicing? It's because there's a deep reminder during those moments when we're... It's not about seeking, per se, but it's still a reminder of something that's deep and peaceful. You mean the meditation and the practice? 
Yeah, whatever practice brings us to, and you know, physiologically, it's just some brain, you know, your brain goes into theta waves and, you know, they can actually read it, the change in your brain. Like if somebody was to yeah, check the your brain. Figure, for, for the action figure and stuff, there's, those are nice forms of maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, maintenance, and it just, I think it's just a reminder, like, um, being hungry reminds you that you need food. Yeah, but again, it's defined by the action figure and stuff. Yeah. 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 So that's fine. It's when the action figure is used as a vehicle to, to transcend to the unknown, uh, that's not fine, in my view. Well, it won't work. I mean, it won't, just won't work. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not that meditation works either, but then it really doesn't work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but see, the thing is, most in most cases, yeah, the head reads behavior as a way of convincing itself of stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. Some stuff. Uh, maybe that's necessary at a certain time and in a certain frame that you need to be convinced you know you that you're not is need needs to be convinced to be okay for a few minutes or an hour or not flip out at the at the birthday party or something like that yeah and the way it convinces itself is you know i meditated this morning or i said a prayer whatever yeah, you know, that's all happening in the uh, in the appearing. Yes, the appearing that is in the appearing in the dreaming, so to speak. It has its relevance when it has its relevance. But we're, the topic here is not about all that. The topic here is, you know, I meditate. Basically, are you? Said a prayer. Yeah, it is. Are you what you are looking for? Now, when are you here? You're talking about your whole thing that you always talk. About. Yeah, I'm talking about today at this yeah. meeting. Yeah? yeah. So, the the other things have their own validity at certain times and places and stuff. But the topic here is: Are we applying the same tools that we would apply to trying to know something outside of ourselves to basically try to know what we are? Yeah, right. and right, right, if right. that's the case, how would, if you are truly that which you are, and it constantly seems to be looking for itself, there's something off there, yeah? Of course. I mean, course. there's an aberration in a programming or something, because it would be simple, like if you are a lion, then it would be easy if you just went, to a meeting and someone said, hey, you're a lion, and all confusion would be cleared up. But there's an activity going on that's sort of like uh, with the idea of a clone. So the clone finally gets indisputable evidence that it's a clone. But how it receives that evidence is as a human programming. The human programming's reaction finding out that it's a clone probably won't be a good one because humans think, what? I'm not a fucking clone. I'm not mechanical. I'm, I've got a life and I'm the doer and shit. So this idea of practice and everything is all good uh, when it's applied to, let's say, uh, letting my lungs expand more or relaxing my nerves or my high blood pressure. Yeah, it has its meaning and its value. But as a mechanism to find what I already am, I think it does, it's, does a disservice. It doesn't work. So, you know, that's it. And, you know, and, I, and it's a finality to me. I don't see that, I don't believe it's ever gonna work. I don't believe, uh, because it's, it's trying to do an end around something that's rather, rather huge, which is you are that, which you may be wanting to look for or improve or get better about, yeah? And that you are that basically trumps every other thing. <laughs> My feeling it does. 
it trumps like every other card the mental state could deal out. The you are that card just trumps the whole game. Yeah, so yeah. To what you're not, hey, it's good to have a like a royal flush. Straight. But when it comes to what you are, it doesn't give a shit if it has five twos, yeah, because you are that. You're not going to win a game and get closer to it, nor are you going to lose a game and get farther from it. I just feel there's too much, uh, too many insane ideas that have been held to be sane, yeah, and, and I believe it all comes from... Uh, Ego. A, a denial, or it's a passive denial, because you don't feel like you're doing it, but the being, being taking yourself to be what you're not is a, a, a passive denial of what you are. And I don't think that changes, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, so the, and it's not an ego. The ego to me is an objectification of the thing that's masquerading as a subject. Once it objectifies itself, so it's like takes off a mask, and as it's taking off the mask, it applies a new mask. So, you know, now you think you've understood the, the mask. You don't realize it's sort of like in the pandemic. You buy a box of those daily reuse, you know, you use the mask one day and you throw and you have like 50 of them. We're thinking, oh, I've recognized what I'm not, the ego. But what's recognizing it is what you think the ego is. <laughs> so, I mean, I find that to be uh, an important topic to speak about because it's before all the maintenance and the meditating and all that shit. It's way before it. And, if, yeah. if, and it's going to give meaning to what comes after. And so meditation is just an activity. It's what the, it's, it's the meaning it's given. And the meaning it's given is usually dictated from where the meaning is seen to be given from. And if you're giving it from a separate, long-lasting, independent, Good separate, you may have Good a totally different if you weren't. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I'm not going to ask my other question, but it all has to do with, uh, and I'll ask you maybe next Wednesday or next week, but it's all about deep motivation. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, see. I mean, uh, that's the way, question I've been. Let's say, okay, you know. so here's motivation. Motivation can be incredible to the point where there's no more motivation needed. That's the point. In other words, all these things aren't the, they're, they're boosters to the ship. They're not the fucking ship. So, all right, motivation to, it led, it led me, maybe it led me to reading books I would never have read. I didn't understand them at first. Or I went to India, something motivated me to go there. Or I went to see some old dude in Bombay, or I did that. Uh, I don't have any of that motivation. So that was motivation well spent. <laughs> I guess, because it brought me, it had an expiration date, it had a term of limits, a lim, you know, it, it, it's not like something I thrive on, motivated, motivated, there's a point where there's no, there's no use for motivation, <laughs> in a certain sense, so, yeah. Always dictated to where from where you are. I mean, motive. You can't say motivation is good. You can't say it's bad. It's it's lent a meaning by wherever we're at. Yeah. So, if I'm at some kind of corporate building and they're trying to motivate their sales force to sell more so they can have higher profit for the the, the uh, shareholders, then fucking motivation seems very, very important. I feel a lot of pressure on it, maybe. And I've got to look at my motivation because I don't fucking want to sell, you know, 52 flavor soap or something. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, this is my whole life, my business. I won't be able to buy food. Yeah. Okay. I see all that. But what with? <laughs> Someone else has entered it. So, yeah, it's the, um, it's all every, the meaning that anything has doesn't come from the thing. Or the, right, 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 right. Yeah, right. it's before exactly. it. So. Right.
Right. So if what comes right. what comes after that you're not is motivated <laughs> to arrive at what it believes is before, but way before, like a long journey, the journey may be really quick where the motivation will be a disservice. I mean, yeah, you've landed already. <laughs> There's, the, the, the motivation to land will be extinguished. Yeah, so it can happen in a nanosecond because you are what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of this is, from what I'm looking at, is a man thing. It's like we've got a lot of pressure to do something with our lives in a particular way. And I think I'm facing a lot into the man, you know, the man who hasn't felt like he has accomplished enough. And then, you know, so that's, it's a kind of semi-specific way of dropping this bullshit. Yeah, that's not a, that's not, uh, I would send you down the hall to another room for the talk. Yeah, this is about man, woman, I don't know, before that. <laughs> yeah. But I understand. Anyway, thanks. Thanks I, so much. You are, whatever you're doing is working, so just do it. Yeah, I mean, it's working for you. You're, I see you, you're fine to me. And so just just hold it loosely by seeing it's not you doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's just happening. Yeah, that's a, yeah. You know, let's say I was motivated to look for the truth when it was shown to me completely that the looking for the truth is the blindness to the truth, then there was a loss of interest or motivation in looking for the truth. <laughs> it just made complete sense. <laughs> I was motivated when I thought I was something else looking for the truth, <laughs> when I realized I am that which I'm looking for, hey, maybe I should knock off some of the looking for it. <laughs> I don't know. Seems obvious. <laughs> I don't have to write a treatise, you know, you just, yeah. Yeah, I was keen on getting out of something because I felt very uncomfortable, irritable, restless. Then I realized trying to get out of it is a bigger form of being in it. Well, I might as well sit back and put on that spiritual shoe and not walk for a while and let the cards get reshuffled because the way I'm reading the cards, it ain't working. Yeah. <laughs> and so I hope, I hope these talks are just like that. They, they not only give you a, mo a moment of pause, but they pause the moment, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so stuff can be revealed, not to you, more about you. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's one of my meager hopes for the talks. <laughs> you know what I'm sharing? It's as clear as clear it can be. I'm uh, hoping it gets across. Yeah. But coming through this little hose, it makes complete. It's just it rings with like an incredible echo for a long, 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 long time. <laughs> it just, yeah. I would hope to, you know, allow that ring or that echo. And then when the echo is heard and you see how, what's sort of containing the echo, muffling the echo, uh, putting a ceiling on the echo, maybe you can start questioning, maybe I'm not that ceiling, maybe I'm not that wall. And then the echo just goes and goes and goes, yeah? If the things that seem to appear in it, but are seen as obstructions to it, just they knock over, then the echo just almost completes itself, yeah? It's, it goes back to, and it's just like an incredible, mm, yeah. I mean, if, if it was that simple, really, if that, that was actually what was happening, not a question would arise, not a question, not a but, not a this, not a that. You would just be enthralled by the vibra vibratoriness of it, yeah? 
I love questions, but I mean, they have a point of ending also, yeah? Because sometimes the questions are furthering the, the questioner, in a sense. They have a different agenda. The mental state's using it to further the questioner, not to uh, bring the questioner to an end earlier. First of all, there's no ending to the questioner. There's no questioner. But you know what I mean? So sometimes um, there is a time, and you may go there a lot, where there'll be no questions. The sound of the echo will just be completely clarifying. Completely. Completely. And you'll be convinced, you know? The mental guns will be put down, and you'll just be able to be, uh, it's sort of like, stop looking, stop walking towards, and then something will just move you, and then, <laughs> okay, yeah, and then was, things will be clearer, blue will be blue, red will be red, yeah, you'll just be stop things, and yeah. Thanks, Noor. Johnny's up. Johnny? Paul? Yes. Oh, Johnny. Hi. Uh, can I uh, share uh, experience instead of asking a question? Not your whole life experience, but yeah, an experience, yeah. So. Well, it's unbelievable. I was just sitting down to do some work and I looked at Facebook and I saw this was happening live. And so I think this is the first time I've uh, been to the Zoom with you guys. And I love you guys. Uh, I will. I was in my apartment in downtown and I just woke up, must have been from a nap. And you called me. And you asked me the normal question of how you doing? And I said, well, I just woke up and I'm really groggy. And you said, something isn't groggy. And I think I had to hang up on you at that point. Uh, it was the first time that the paradigmically What I'm not was clearly in front of what I am. So awareness that was seemingly here was all of a sudden here and with no thought or effort on my part. And The simplicity is shocking because what I'm not really wants this to be incredibly complicated. I would, you know, it wants to have a whole bookshelf of books explaining to me uh, what I'm not. And uh, so it's, it, it's easily relatable to step two. In recovery, yeah, yeah. In 12 step, in recovery, I keep going deeper into step two to see, right, because the wording is, came to believe power greater than self, greater than ourselves, could restore us to sanity. So I started to really look at the power of self right there. What is the power? How does it manifest in a moment-by-moment -moment basis in the thoughts and the feelings and the actions that it forces me, what I am, to take? This has been the practice, I guess, for just a little work, to spend more and more and more time 
as what I am and not what I'm not. Because really, suffering and dissatisfaction are impetus for change. This is just, I mean, uh, you know, this is not obviously Paul's verbiage. This is just how it seems to work for me that every time I really concede to my innermost self that I'm dysfunctional, that I'm an, uh, I, that the body is infected with the family disease of alcoholism, and the body, that alcoholism manifests exactly the same in me as it does in everyone else I've met who's had a, a vision of it, an understanding of how the mind works. I lose the concept of ownership of alcoholism. It's not mine, it's ours. And then, I can't be comfortable or happy or any of those things as what I'm not. It makes perfect sense. If I th am looking through a camera and I, what I am, it becomes convinced that it's the camera, I'm going to be restless and irritable and discontented as the camera. And that suffering creates an impetus for me to look at things another way, a bigger way, to ask for help, to talk to you, to call Paul, to do whatever. And a willingness as a self to be free. And that's really all it took. An open mind, which is the gift of step two. A truly open mind. And now Paul says to me, Something isn't groggy. Something has been awake all night watching you sleep, watching your dreams. And I went, Pew! and it was a simple paradynamic shift from what I'm not to what I am. And it's just become simpler since then. I don't know. That's all I got. Great, Johnny. Fantastic. Hello, Johnny. Uh, oh, we, and my question is, what's the capital of South Dakota? <laughs> Pierre. Am I right? Pierre? Isn't it? Bismarck. I have to say what comes to mind first, otherwise I start thinking about it too much. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> I don't even care if there's a North Dakota. I knew you didn't. <laughs> Go ahead, Abby. <laughs> Avi. All right. Hey, uh, hey, Paul. Um, my name's Avi, and this is my first time at any satsang. Um, and I'm sort of here just because I wanted to um, just say thank you. I think um, the reason for that is because I had this feeling of you know, there's something uh, missing, there's something, something incomplete or wrong um, for a long time. And I tried to apply, I knew, I understood intrinsically and implicitly that the wholeness that I was always seeking was, it had to be, it had to be whole. So it had to be, um, there, there couldn't, there couldn't have been any, um, paradoxically, some obstruction, right? But I was using these sort of spiritual um, interests, tactics, skills, practices um, to understand that, to observe myself, to meditate, whatever that is. Um, just, um, just about, just about any, anything you can imagine. Um, uh, and uh, I found your videos and I had never gotten the, 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 the very, I mean, 
there's a lot there's a lot of people who are who are very um self-aware or or aware of non-self um however you want to put it hmm. that are not going to give you what sh- they are going to say explicitly that you're not that you're not getting something here you i'm not giving you anything but something about the way in which you were talking was was a very personable because it was very non um there was no prerequisite of belief or secularism in the way you spoke it was like very just like I don't know, you were using profanity and I like that shit. And it was very carefree, right? Um, And I just felt like I understood you and I was able to receive this message where you, you, um, you know, you planted that slap and it's still ringing with with no effort. Um, It's it's continually, I'm very, um, there's this awareness that that this um it just makes it's so clear to me now that if you assume that you are self or you are this this um you know you are the thought or the the strategy or whatever this this drama that's playing out this this force this mental force playing out you assume that you were that then it's almost like understanding that there isn't self it's almost like you're creating this vacuum for this like you said earlier this this wall or um so use some use some noun of confinement where it's almost like you're resonating you're containing by be- with the belief you like you're like containing that thing right so so then what happens or you're not you aren't containing yeah. that thing but yeah. but this energy is perpetuating itself, right? And the the sort of like that there's this tricky um, that that identification that that makes it feel as if there's this loop that's being created because essentially like this this conscious experience is is it's all working through these loops, right? But that loop is like feeding any particular loop can feed into itself and make itself more real right but only as that loop itself so mm. it, it it it's increasingly clearer and clearer that the only way to gain real peace of mind is is not even um through observation because then as an observation there's still you can still feel like there's something to work out but there's just nothing there, there's it's complete surrender and and i understood this um very clearly from from your videos when i was um apparently struggling with these things and um i um i feel i feel that it is just too easy it's like <laughs> it's 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 funny um and and yeah i just wanted to thank you for for um you ended up being a very important voice um and you're very um humble um as as that or as not as that however you want to put it um you you are just to me you're just a regular guy that had a had a really um rough um life and and you struggled with with a shame that came with that and in order to to move on from that, you needed to you needed to um, it was it was a natural progression. It was it just you just to me seem like a very um, kind of like redeemed person, and I respect you a lot. And I um I just I thank you for um, for for I'm very grateful that I stumbled upon your uh, your videos. I wasn't gonna end up doing this um, Zoom today i um was in the middle of some work and then i looked at the time and i wasn't sure if it was still going on but i um hopped on real quick and i'm, I'm very happy to be here and be able to uh pass this message thank you avi thank you thanks avi very much 
I wanted to say hello to Peter from Seattle over there. I don't know if he's there anymore. I see his picture, so just telling him thanks a lot for that lovely uh, swim in that lake that you live on. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, this is Peter. <laughs> Peter, yeah. Amelia and I uh, want to thank you again for the lovely stays at the lake in Seattle. Uh, it was very nice having you here. Absolutely delightful, and uh, I'm really enjoying this. It's uh, just really a breath of fresh air. I've, oh, I've great. Been, been sitting here laughing, so I, I uh, had to turn off the video. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, uh, we have a lot of fun here. Yes. All right, Peter, yeah. thank you. I'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have another question, uh, Mike? And Avi and Nor and everyone that's shared, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yep, thanks. Uh, I don't see any other hands. Well, maybe we'll end soon. We sort of like, this is like free form night. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, very good. All right. Well, if we don't have uh, any, I end could of I could add. I could share something I, I recently. Um, kind of. I if uh, no one has anything to say, I I'd, um had this very interesting. Just because someone who just shared, I I forget uh, who their name was, uh, who they were. They mentioned sort of like the dreaming, the sleeping, observing thing. Um, and I had an experience recently where I had this very clear, like, it was very funny. The self is a very, very funny thing because, um, um, well, I'll explain why. Um, <clears throat> keep it, Avi, keep it a little short. Concise. Yeah, no, this is very concise. This is like, <laughs> basically, when you're falling asleep, you know that period of uh, like hypnagogic, um, images, um, kind of your, your, there's a, there's a waking consciousness and there's a sleeping yeah. consciousness or the, it's really one, but it's appearing as two. One thing is, is coming in and one thing is phasing out. Um, and as the one falling asleep, it feels as if the, the imagery, the, the experience of these things that are kind of bubbling up from nowhere, they feel if you take yourself to be one, the one falling asleep as other, but actually the entirety of it is, you could say, if anything is a greater, is a greater self, if you want to, if you want to invent some, something there, but, um, this, uh, kind of, uh, this, this idea, um, that, I had, I was, I was falling asleep um, a few weeks ago, um, kind of was, it was very, uh, something about it was very funny to me because um, there's no way that there could be, if, if there was two, how could there possibly be two, two of you inside of your conscious, like if you're assuming that you're falling asleep and then there's this feeling, it's very explicit, feels like um, you don't get confused with someone else's body being you, but somehow you, there's this sense that you can be falling asleep while these images are being brought up and it's coming from this other place. So it's not you almost, but how, how silly is that? <laughs> uh, it was not you, period. But yeah, bro. All of it, all of it, not me, yeah. Avi, I'm going to, I'm going to say goodbye and hello to you. It's nice to meet you, my nice friend. Nice to meet you. Yes. I'm going to say, try to catch everyone today. I got, oh. I see Helen. Helen is there. Nice to see you, Helen. I see a cat uh, somewhere with uh, Drew. We got Mike C, Jack G. Jack G's got his camouflage hat on. Yeah. I've recognized you, bro. You can take it off. I caught you. There's Nor. Let's see. I saw Kaiser. Kaiser was a little silent today. I like that. I like that Kaiser. <laughs> we got Mickey. Mickey's like uh, one of the foundational things of this 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 world of squares. Thank you, Mickey, for holding the squares up. 
Mike C, I see you. Uh, Nor, we got uh, Ben from Miami. Nice to see you, Ben. Yeah, something's crawling on his head. I don't know. I hope he catches it. We got uh, Malcolm. Nice to see you, Malcolm, outside, trucking around. Dale O. Is that London or England? They're looking pretty good today over there. We got Dale. Nice to see you, Dale. Sukyanya Mikali. Yes, always nice to see you, honey. Thank you for bringing such a nice, pleasant atmosphere with you. Yeah. We got uh, Kai, oh, Kaiser again, Amelia Donato, Pita, Johan, Christopher, Imad, Johnny. Uh, let's see the others. Uh, we've got, oh, Juna, Juna. Nice to see you, Juna, there. Nick, more and less. Andre, we got Yariv, who I just had the pleasure of seeing the other day. Did you take any of my silverware, Yariv? I'm missing a few knives. You can bring them back. I won't get upset. Just leave them there. Leave them on the porch. Drew, we got Glenda. Glenda O'Driscoll. Now, Glenda got all her questioning done, like the first two appearances. She's just... Uh, She's rolling right along now. Keith, nice to see you, my friend. We'll have you over soon again. Celia, nice to see you. Luca, we got, uh, let's see, we got Johans. Nice to see you, Johans. We got Mr. and Mrs. Void. They're home today. Barbara and Roman in Germany. Nice to see you always. Sonia. I think I saw, there she is, there's uh, Sharon with her uh, Irish wolfhound. Wow, that head is huge. It's like Tyrannosaurus Rex with fur on. Wow. We got Michael, we got Gary C. Gary C is getting used to that corner, Gary. That's good, eh? The corner is the largest space you've ever been in. Woohoo! We got uh, Christine Youngstrom. Nice to see you, Christine. Johans, we got Natalie. Natalie, what's there to say? Always nice to see you, honey. Yeah, I hear if you ever come over to America, you'll find us. Yeah? Yeah. We got uh, Z, my main man. Z, let me know the whereabouts of your landlady. <laughs> Michael. Mike Serrani, you've been uh, awake these last few meetings, Mike. I appreciate that. Richard and Etta, there they are. They're either in their living room or the car. I can never tell the difference. <laughs> Sky, we got Norman. Nice to see you, Norman. You, you, your participation is felt very much, so I appreciate it. Holding the space, as they say. Mike up there. He's the one who does all the work for this thing to happen. Judith and Sally, and then, uh, yeah, I'm just so happy to, to uh, just spend these times with you. It's very cool. Miss you, Z. Let me know later. I think I'm going to go to the city, though. I don't know. All right, see you. Bye. Thank you. And uh, the thing will be open, and we have talks every Wednesday and Saturday. If you have any trouble... Uh, and you, you've only got introduced to it through Facebook, just go to Zen Bitch Slap. We have the, all the, link, the links to the website, uh, the Zooms, and just come visit us on Zoom. Yeah? Yeah. Sky, nice to see you. Sky just got up. That's amazing. You were bringing him up from the dead like uh, Lazarus, but it took a little longer. Jesus, I think, had more Shakti. I don't know. Maybe. Sally, Judith. See you guys. Thank you so much Thanks, for having us. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye bye. Thank bye. You. Mike, good to see you, man. Hey Jack, yeah. What are you taking off? No, no. It's just good just good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> How goes it? Great. I like the green nice. of your hat. Oh, thanks. Ugh. Hey, Natalie, how's your camper traveling going? Uh, I haven't found one yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm still looking. 
Okay. Yeah. Back to camper shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, are you in Italy? No, I'm in Austria. Oh, okay. And the weather is uh, fucked up. <laughs> is it winter there? No. Summer? No, it's, it's monsoon. <laughs> Oh, three, days, okay. three days raining and one day sun. Uh, it's like, oh. I miss Greece. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the summer. <laughs> it's hot as hell here. I'm in Boston. Near Boston. It's 90, 90 degrees here right now. Wow. Yeah. The weather here is very uh, schizophrenic. It's 10 below in the winter and then 90 and 100% humidity in the summer. What would you do for the winter? Um, well, I usually, I usually uh, take off. I've spent uh, winters in California, Arizona, Hawaii, um, <clears throat> Florida. So I usually take off once the uh, once the leaves turn, like that Led Zeppelin song. Once the leaves start to fall on the ground. <laughs> That's hey, my Nick. story. Hey Nick Moore, are you hypnagogic? Michael, I don't know if you if you if you watch that YouTube link I sent you about that. Speaker. Yeah, I started it. I haven't finished it yet. Yeah, so she's really started. funny. She's really yeah. funny. Hey Jack, what's the uh, green flag about? The green flag? Yeah, in your hat. Oh, somebody asked that. I didn't know what they were talking about. Um, it's just the hat. It's uh, it's an arches hat. Can you see the uh? See the little arrow there? Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with military. It's just the color. They come in all colors, all kinds of colors. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I've bought a few of them. I, I like them. Hey, Kaiser, you're in New York, right? Upstate New York? Uh, no, I'm in Minnesota. So you guys are talking about schizophrenic weather, man. Uh, on my birthday, not this year, but the last year, it was about negative 30. So it gets pretty cold in the winter, and it gets uh, pretty hot in the summer. So Minnesota. Yeah. So it's hot right now? We, we get it. That's where all our snow comes from, Minnesota. <laughs> that's where it all comes from, the Great Lakes, right? Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go. I'll talk to you later. Good talking to you. Hi, Good to see you, Kaiser. Thanks Bye. for the note. Hey, Sharon. Always nice to see you. I just really love seeing your peaceful, beautiful face. Oh, you thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you too. How are you? Good enough. You look so good with three your three hat. <laughs> Thanks, Judith. So do you. <laughs> Without <terrible>. that. <laughs> no, it's it's hot day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad I got to meet you, Sharon, before the, uh, you know, we had to uh, start separating so much. It was nice to meet you in the flesh. Yeah, here's to Where the old Where do you live day. again? I'm in Mill Valley. Right, in, right, right. Right over the bridge. And you're, remind me where you are again. Carolinda, North San Rafael, so we're not that far. Oh, gosh, I had it in my head. You were further away. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'd be lovely to what see state? you. What state? What state is that? Oh, in California. California, okay. yeah, just north of San Francisco area. Okay, cool. Close to Paul. Nice. Pretty close to Paul, right. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But it's really nice. I, I mean, I'm just really liking that I'm seeing so many people around the world in the Sangha. It's, it, it, it's, it's a, it compensates for the lack of person to body to body. I really like the body to body, but this is special. I, okay. I like it. There's something to it. Yeah, Paul yeah. Really likes it too. It's yeah. really interesting, Paul's sort of the way he puts it that your square showing up is part of the yeah. Sangha. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't put it as well as he did, but 
it's it's really interesting this global thing yeah this is the first time i've heard someone uh, say sangha really yeah he, he well, I mean, I, that word i've been around time, a, so about I... a month and a half so yeah yeah cool yeah I, I, I don't mind the word sorry I was just saying, I don't mind the word. I kind of understand what he means by it, I guess. Yeah. You oh, know, no. It's like it, a group it, energy that forms. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting because it's just a different language with AA. You know, it's just semantics. But yeah. Michael, you're still yeah. recording, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I have a, I have a, what do you call it, a, a, a checklist, but I have, yeah, to, I know have I, to, I, I to pick up the checklist. <laughs> sorry, I, 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 should have, I should have caught that earlier. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you caught it now. <laughs> oh, well. That was good. Oh, you're starting a lot, Sharon? Sorry. Oh, yeah.